Welcome back to week four of our van build series. If you're new around here, we're converting a 2018 Ford Transit to a luxury tiny home on wheels. This build is for a client, but if you're interested in the van that we call home, be sure to check out some of our previous videos. Last week, we showed you the beginnings of building cabinets and the basics of how to put them together. Since last week's video, we've made some final detailed cuts on our kitchen cabinets and finished assembling them. In today's video, we're showing you how to build upper cabinets, which, as you know, can be tricky because of the curvature of the van. If you're interested in learning, be sure to keep watching and stay tuned until the end for a very exciting announcement. It is week four of the build, and I am pleased to report that the weather has been a whole hell of a lot better around here. If you guys have been watching since the first uh, van build series we put out, my kind of dark here. Oh, there we go. You guys know that we started in temps like up to 110 degrees out here. And now our highs are like 89 and 90, which is still kind of warm, but much better. It's cooling off in the mornings and at night. So we're happy. Today we are getting started on upper cabinets. And so we are going to take you through the whole process. We haven't even done any measuring, planning, anything. So we're gonna show you guys how we do all of that. But before we get started with that, I wanna go ahead and show you guys um, all of our cabinets that are dry fitted in the van right now. And you can get a feel for what the layout is gonna be. Okay, so when you first walk in, you've got our kitchen cabinet that does extend into the doorway a little bit. And then we have our shower here. There will be a partition wall here. There's our pocket door. And then we've got a closet, a full wardrobe, and a seating area. And we also have this back wall in now. So this bottom opening is actually gonna be for a microwave, and the top one is going to be for a desk, and then this is going to be some outlets and USB ports. Good morning. Good morning. Are you awake yet? Ready to build upper cabinets? Upper cabinets, yep. <laughs> you guys saw the quick run through of us putting these together, but something that I wanted to talk about was these slits back here, if you're curious why we have them. So that is gonna be for ventilation. This big compartment is gonna have a nice size fridge and the stove is gonna be on top of it as well. And it's really important that you have some kind of ventilation for those products because they do put off heat. The fridge puts off heat from the condenser and of course the stove is going to be putting off a little bit of heat and you don't want that all trapped in this cabinet. It's not good. So what we're going to be doing is venting air through the back of the cabinets. They all have slits routed into them. And then there's going to be a computer fan that's actually pulling air through it so that we actually have airflow. I think the whole concept of venting your cabinets is kind of overlooked and I don't see a whole lot of people talking about it, but it is important. So I just wanted to throw that in there. All it takes is creating some kind of way for air to go through your cabinet. It doesn't even have to be pretty and routed out like this is. You can just cut a slit or cut some holes in it and make sure that you have something that is pulling or pushing air out of there. Talk about our red cabinets. Come on. <laughs> so when you're considering building your overhead cabinets, there's a lot of things to consider. Wow. Profound. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things is comfortability of standing in your kitchen space, if you're going to have it in your kitchen area even. Um, because when you're doing your dishes or whatever you're doing in your kitchen, you don't want your cabinets like in your face, like out here. So. Uh, you kind of have to think about when you're doing dishes where your head is going to be sitting and where the cabinets are going to be sitting so you're not like doing your dishes like this or something. Um, or smacking your head all the time. Or smacking your head, yeah. In our van, our kitchen overhead cabinets are recessed a lot more than our rear overhead cabinets are. Some other things to consider are what you're storing in your cabinets. Uh, if you have something in mind that you want to be storing up there, like take some measurements, see if it's gonna fit going in and out of the cabinet because there's an angle on the back wall, there's gonna be face frame, so you gotta consider what you're putting in there. So this tool is kind of like an angle finder. When you're using this, you gotta make sure the land, the, land, the van is pretty level. Uh, for, so when you put it up against something, uh, whatever is at zero or 90 degrees is actually zero or 90 degrees. So a few minutes ago, I put a piece of wood up here and I 
laid this angle finder up against here and as you can see it's got a five degree angle up this way so that is super helpful for when you're cutting all of your pieces of wood that you already have a consistent angle to follow along this back wall we are going to have to put some of the uh, shiplap over the uh, over these ribs so that when we put the overhead cabinets up we can actually find the actual angle of the roof line Normally at this stage of the build, we would actually already have the ceiling insulation and the ceiling already up, but we are waiting on a skylight to come in. We have to wait to put everything up until we get the actual skylight in. So we're kind of working around that right now. We're just gonna kind of uh, temporarily zip up a ceiling uh, so that when we put the overhead cabinets up, it's still gonna be a consistent roof uh, line to follow. Our client wanted overhead cabinets on this side of the van, but not the other side. I think that was a great decision on keeping the back of the van as open as possible because we've got a lot of stuff going on in the front of the van. We have a full shower, a full closet, a large kitchen area. It's a lot going on up here and, and it could feel pretty tight up here, but keeping the back open and like going through the back windows, I feel like that was a, a great decision on his point. So real quick, we'll go show you our layout in our van and how we set up our overhead cabinets. As you can see, it is fall and Mackenzie is in a very festive fall spirit. <laughs> and now you are too? Yeah, <laughs> yep. So as you can see on our overhead cabinets, these rear cabinets actually stick out about three more inches than these ones. Rather than all the cabinets being this shallow, we wanted more storage back here where we're not standing all the time. So that's why we have a kind of a, a notch or a kick out here. We just spent some time finalizing the measurements for our upper cabinets and just wanted to share with you where we're at for that. We are making them 14 inches tall and in the kitchen it's going to be 11 inches total deep and that includes the door of the cabinet and then the back area is going to be a total of 13 inches deep. Been working on these templates uh, for a little while now. Uh, these are gonna be the dividers in the cabinet and the end pieces. Been going back and forth, making sure this is completely up against the back wall and the ceiling. Just put up these uh, temporary shiplap pieces on the roof and the back panel. Just kind of simulate what the cabinet is gonna be sitting up against. Based on this angle, making sure this is exactly zero degrees and this is exactly 90 degrees. Also having Mackenzie kind of standing back away from everything and eyeballing, making sure it looks right. Our tools could be saying one thing, but when we step back and look for, look at it, it could be, it could look a little wonky. So having a good balance of looking back at it, eyeballing versus like using the proper tools is, is, <laughs> is a good thing. <laughs> now that we have our template, now we can head to the table saw, cut out all of our pieces. tell we're kind of starting to lose light and so we are going to try to finish uh, making all of the cuts that we need before we assemble it tonight but I think that we're actually gonna come back to it tomorrow morning so we'll probably pick you guys up then we'll catch you guys in the morning What's up? How's it going? Oh, good making sure all these dividers are Perfectly straight, taking any little imperfections out of them. Getting ready to put them together. This morning we finished up all of our cuts. So Joey seated down all of the divider pieces that have all those angles on them. And we have our bottom piece. And the only thing we have to do is cut our cross braces to the right length. And then what we're gonna do before we assemble is actually cut out with a hole saw bit, uh, some spaces for some under cabinet lighting. So we're gonna be using these dimmable puck lights. They're similar to what we have, but these actually look much nicer. They have uh, an aluminum rim around them. Ours are plastic. So this is gonna just look much nicer, much more professional. So before we assemble, we're going to map out where we want those lights. We're gonna have two puck lights under the cabinets in the kitchen, and then two that are gonna be back in the bed area on separate circuits. And we're gonna get those cut, and then we'll start assembling. Joey finished cutting all the holes for the lights. You hole want saws explain? are on the <laughs> hole saws are on the to do list or uh, Home Depot list next time we go because yeah. uh, they were a little dull as you can see and and burned it a little. The lighting is kind of bad, but they like burned the holes. <laughs> anyway, 
so they're fine. <laughs> new hole saws are in our future. Last thing to do before we assemble cabinets is to route down about probably a quarter inch from here to the back so that there's a groove for the wires of the lights to sit. That way everything is going to be sitting flush and then we're just gonna put a rubberized mat on top. Oh, hello, Mr. Fly. <laughs> a rubberized mat on top so you won't see any of this, but if you needed to get to it, you could have access to it. Mackenzie just routed all the grooves for the wires and I'll just give you an example of how these are going in. Push the wires through. These are just gonna pop into place like that. So on the bottom of the cabinet, this is what you're gonna see. And then on this side, the wire is gonna be laid in the wood like that. We could fill this with uh, Bondo or silicone or something so that uh, when we lay something over it like a rubber mat, you're never gonna feel it or see it. So it'll turn out really nicely. So we're finally officially ready to start putting these together. So I just wanna give you an idea of how it's gonna to go together. Obviously we have our bottom piece here that we showed you, and then we're gonna have an outside piece here and an inside piece where all of the dividers are. And then in between them will be a cross brace here, and then a cross brace here, and then another one at the front here. We are finally done with cabinets. That took a lot longer than expected, but. Like always. Hey, you gotta do it right, so it takes a little bit longer. I think they turned out pretty well. <coughs> They're all pretty straight and square. Now, all we need to do is put face frames and doors on them. And sand them and paint them. And sand and, and paint, lots of Bondo. Fill <laughs> holes. We have a bit of yep. work. As you can see, there are lots of Pocket jigs and pocket holes, jigs, pocket holes, pocket holes, screws. whatever. And we need to fill all of these and that and bits and bobs, you know. It's oh, it's right. The reason that we opt for <laughs> pocket screws is to avoid putting screws coming from the outside in because it's just more things that you would have to fill and sand on the outside. And sometimes over time in a van, uh, things that you fill can kind of wiggle their way out and crack. So we actually have no holes on the outside of this whatsoever the mm -hmm. bottom piece is a single piece of plywood and then we just have our end pieces uh, but we actually were able to completely avoid putting any any screw holes on the outside of it so awesome and also a lot of the structure behind the cabinet is pocket jig behind the actual structure so when you open the cabinet you're not even going to see most of the supports mm -hmm. going along there should we dry fit it yeah good I mean, all those wires are gonna be in the way, though. Yeah. Yeah. Should I try to pull them through real quick? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Woo! Ah! <laughs> 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 all right, let's get them. Wait, no, I now I want to look at it. This isn't so bad. Dang! Damn, we did good. Hey, that looks really good. That's gonna bring us to the end of today's video. Hopefully we helped somebody if you're in the middle of building up your cabinets and you're feeling lost. Um, I'm hoping that you got at least something out of it today. Like we mentioned before, we still have some filling and sanding and painting and face frames to put on. So they're not totally finished, but the hard part, which is just building the structure, is out of the way. So I mentioned in the beginning of the video that we do have an announcement for you guys. We've been getting a lot of interest in this van build, so we decided to open up availability for two more vans this spring. If you are interested or know somebody that is interested in having us build their van, we're gonna go ahead and link in the description below where you can contact us for an inquiry. We've been loving the whole process of building this van so far, and we're really excited to be taking on more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. We make a castle to ruin.